All right. Hi, everybody. It's our CFB Talk 178. Welcome. You know, Harbaugh has done exactly what was expected and has left Michigan to go back to the NFL. So we are here. We're going to go ahead and do our, our CFB Talk. It's kind of an emergency edition. So if you'd like to join the conversation, give your thoughts, give your impressions on everything that's going on right now with Jim Harbaugh leaving Michigan to go to the Chargers. Feel free to hit request. We'll happily go through a little bit of the conversation as we, uh, a b- bit of the backstory as we get into this. Obviously, the big story was the Chargers announced what we were all expecting, and that is he is heading to the NFL. You know, I'm going to go ahead and let someone up since I want to allow your thoughts on this. So, Harry, when you get a chance, just feel free to hit unmute. Looks like it's connecting him, and I'll try to get to as many folks who want to add to the conversation as possible. Looks like I'm having a little bit of trouble connecting Harry, so I'm going to let Jeremiah up. Jeremiah, when you get a chance, feel free to unmute. Yeah, uh, thanks for this. Um, I just wanted to quickly say that, you know, this was expected as a Michigan fan. Um, I think Sharon Moore, I know there's like a seven-day waiting period, but I think Sharon Moore needs to go ahead and, you know, start making those moves. But I think for the the AD, I'm really more so concerned about Jesse Minner. I know he probably wants to go back to the NFL, but like just throw whatever money at him, (laughs) something at him, and try to get really into the NIL. That was ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because it sounds like, and again, kind of looking at all the the stories that are kind of coming out right now, John U. Bacon, who's a a very dedicated Michigan writer, he's written books on Harbaugh and and the Wolverines and is is pretty well connected with the program from his writing. He has mentioned that, um, again, I mean, everyone's reporting Sharon Moore is basically the lock to become the head coach. And that was expected based on how he performed, but it sounds like, yeah, Jesse Minter, the defensive coordinator, who's a critical part of what made Michigan such a success this season and Jay Harbaugh, um, uh, not only uh, Jim's son, but also he was, uh, he was doing special teams. I've got well, a couple of other positions. They're going to probably join him in Los Angeles. And um, again, John U. Bacon, has at least initially tweeted that uh, they're going to retain their strength and conditioning coach, Ben Herbert, which is a a big deal because for those who may not have paid as close attention to what Michigan did to kind of reach um, that national championship this season, it was unique because their recruiting, while good, was not necessarily in the tip-top echelon like you'd see at their rival school, Ohio State, at, well, Alabama up until this season, TBD, um, at Georgia, they were doing a good job of building up talent with the guys they had. Um, that offensive line, I believe, is almost entirely heading into the NFL because so many of those guys were basically done. So just to kind of build what Jeremiah had pointed out, you know, um, Jesse Minter on the defensive side of the ball was a very key part of that as a defensive coordinator. Um, but strength and, con- uh, strength and conditioning coach Ben Herbert and a lot of those other assistants did an exceptional job in building up a roster that won in a slightly different way than what we had seen. Um, certainly on the other side of the ball in that national championship game, because obviously Washington not, not taking anything away from how they did it, but they took the approach where they had a couple of really key transfers um, that were up in there. You know, I want to let a couple of other folks up here as well, but feel free to hang around uh, Jeremiah. I don't want to, to, to get you off. I just saw Harry, you're trying to get back in. For some reason, they didn't connect the first time. But again, we're sort of talking. We're having this conversation. We'd love to hear from you about your thoughts as Jim Harbaugh has taken um, apparently the job at the, with the uh, San Diego Chargers. Well, pardon me, the L.A. Chargers. Boy, I got to get I still got to get past that. A team he played for, of course, um, at the end of his NFL career, backing up Ryan Leaf and getting in. Um, I believe he had like 11 games he played uh, with the Chargers. And his college career, his coaching career has been impressive i i am old enough to remember when san diego hired him i thought it was kind of unique i'm from southern california uh i noticed that you know oh i didn't even know at the time the torero i think i even the only reason i even knew san diego had a team was because i had to drop someone off at like the law school there years ago and then i saw that they were going like 11 and one back-to-back seasons um at a non-scholarship program that you know not you know it's FCS football still. And then when Stanford hired him, I thought that was a bit of a a good sign for Stanford only because um, it's a tough place to coach because you have a little more academic restrictions. And needless to say, that 2007 season, he made a huge splash 
by upsetting the number one USC Trojans in that famous upset. Um, and then, you know, culminating in the 2010 season where they went 12 and one um, with a victory in the Orange Bowl. And, you know, in the, the, those final two seasons had a pair of Heisman runner ups. Um, and then, you know, obviously decent job in the NFL was able to make it to the Super Bowl in his third year with probably in the second year with the 49ers losing to his brother, uh, in, <laughs> who was, of course, at the time, the coach of the Ravens. Um, after that eight and eight season in 2014, he was basically shown the door and Michigan was able to pick him up. For those of you who remember the hype train that was going on in that initial stage of his time at Michigan. I still remember, I think it was Fox sports had a bunch of interns like dress like him. Uh, they called them the, I, 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 I'm not making this up. They call them the har bros. So they were all these guys in like khakis and, and baseball caps. And so they're kind of geeking out looking just like uh, uh, Jim Harbaugh. And what does he do? He immediately loses his opening game to Utah, which took a little bit of luster off of it, but it was a, a promising year. They went to the citrus bowl it was kind of the the stretch of years where they weren't able to beat Ohio State and they were struggling. That kind of middle period that bottomed out in the pandemic season of 2020, where, of course, Michigan went two and four. And in a moment that was, I think, pivotal and one that I think, you know, throughout the season, people look back on Harbaugh was willing to take a pay cut for basically half his salary because that was another big thing. They were paying him a huge amount of money because they had hired him from that decent run in the NFL they cut his salary and he agreed to cut his salary into four million dollars with a ton of incentives if he got the team going again and lo and behold we had that final stretch um, starting in 2021 where not only beating Ohio State but getting into the playoff where of course um, ended up the the team that had been designed to beat Ohio State wasn't necessarily ready to take on that Georgia team that went on to win the national title uh, the following season same story. We're able to beat Ohio State again, get into the playoff. And J.J. McCarthy had a couple of key mistakes, and the whole team felt a little off, even though they were more talented, and, and they lost to the TCU team that, of course, went on to uh, to lose rather heavily to uh, Georgia. And then this season, it seemed to finally all come together. Although, as many of you know, especially those of you who follow Michigan football, basically even before the season, I'm not talking about the Connor Stallion stuff. I'm not talking about the cheeseburger stuff um, with the COVID dead period issue that uh, led to those initial uh, game suspensions at the beginning of this season. But it sounded like in his ninth season, it was the, the word, the buzz was he was starting to be willing to look for an NFL job. I mean, he'd already flirted with the uh, the Raiders a couple of seasons ago. So it wasn't entirely a shock in a way. They're very different personalities, but I've said there is some uh, analogy to be made between Pete Carroll and Jim Harbaugh. They've coached against each other on, on both the NFL and the college level, but they both had this success at the college level where they just, you could tell they just wanted to go back to the NFL at some point. They had like unfinished business. And with Harbaugh going back now, clearly he wants to not only get back to the Super Bowl, he wants to win it. And uh, the Spanos family with the Chargers uh, are willing to invest in that. Although one thing that is uh, probably needs to be said, it took a little while to build Michigan into what it is now, into the, the team that was able to, to make it all the way through. Um, the NFL is quite impatient as, you know, he went to the, uh, with the 49ers, went to the playoffs. Uh, the first three years went to the Super Bowl that second year. And then after an eight and eight season, um, they, they pushed him out. So it's, it's a pretty merciless uh, business up in the NFL, a little more than college football is um, in a lot of ways. But I think, you know, you've got to have the right mentality. And certainly Harbaugh has it. I just wonder if they'll have the patience in San Diego, if it takes a pardon me, gosh, I keep calling it San Diego, pardon me, with the Chargers, if they, if they continue to have that patience with them. Remarkable season this season for so many ways, not just on the field, obviously the off the field. I, I still get a kick out of the first time I saw the way somebody, the Wikipedia article for the 2023 Wolverine season has a section which is like a gallery of photos of the five different people that coached the, the Wolverines at some point this season. Obviously, Jesse Minter, the defensive coordinator in game one, his son, Jay Harbaugh, coached the first half of game two. Mike Hart, the running back coach, did the second half of game two. And then Sharon Moore coached four of those games uh, and with uh, Jim Harbaugh coaching the rest. 
Jesse Minter, as we've talked about with Jeremiah at the beginning of this, um, he would be a big name to try and retain. The defensive coordinator has been, you know, the defense of Michigan has been clearly the strength of it this season. Um, although, again, what we're seeing from guys like John U. Bacon is it appears he may be going to the Chargers with Jim Harbaugh, along with his son, Jay Harbaugh. Um, Tron Moore, again, the odds on favorite, almost certainly likely to be the next head coach. Although, again, uh, I think a lot of folks had their pre-written articles on this that they hit publish on the moment that this story broke. Um, there are other names out there just in case for some reason Tron Moore isn't the guy. Um, you know, Kansas is Lance Leipold. He's always seems to be up there whenever, especially an upper Midwest coaching position comes for open because, of course, he was the uh, – part of that D3 dynasty. He coached the six championships in uh, Wisconsin, Whitewater, um, Kansas State's Chris Kleiman, obviously great at NDSU and has got Kansas State into a, a competitive edge. A couple of the coordinators for the Baltimore Ravens, like Todd Monken and defensive coordinator Mike McDonald. Um, they've, you know, some of them have also worked with his brother before. Um, and then you start to see names where you just feel like they have to pad out an article. Like, Iowa State head coach Matt Campbell. Yeah, he's been successful at Iowa State. Again, you have to always think, you know, Iowa State has always been a challenge for folks. It's always been tough for them. Um, it's kind of like what Arizona did in hiring uh, San Jose State's head coach. You know, people are like, oh, we went seven and six back to back years. I'm like, that is a miracle at San Jose State. That, that school has a tough situation. But usually the type of coach like that gets hired not at the top school. They get hired at that middle school. And I'm sorry to say Arizona is a middle school where, you know, the coach can then prove themselves with with more um, available to them. So I think Iowa State, even though it is a, a P4 school, I don't think Matt Campbell would ever necessarily get that opportunity. And then people have even thrown in Brian Kelly from LSU. I'm not sure he'd be quite willing to do that, especially since he seems to be building up something at LSU. Um, the other question was even again, I'm throwing out some of the wilder candidates that have already been tossed out. If Michigan were not to retain um, Sharon Moore and, and elevate him to the head coach, which I think is more of the odds on favorite. Uh, another name that's pop up was Luke Fickle with Wisconsin. I don't think that is entirely likely, especially after that seven and six season. Um, but again, there's some other names out there, but most reporting seems to be Sharon Moore. And this is one of those situations where things move so fast that, you know, you almost wonder, am I going to say it? And then we're going to find out they've already announced who the replacement's going to be. But as of this moment, they have not. And again, I'd like to remind you, if you'd like to join the conversation, just hit request on the Twitter app. Would love to hear from you. Would love to hear your thoughts. Um, now that Jim Harbaugh is heading into <laughs> heading into the NFL, um, I see Ski Masks Murphy, one of our regulars, has commented, why would I do this? People grieving. Um, <laughs> I, I know a lot of Michigan fans certainly are, and, uh, and it, it's absolutely, it's amazing as it's been pointed out and, and more than this has been mentioned even before the, uh, the formal announcement today, because people were sort of waiting to see and the inevitable decision of, of Harbaugh to, to leave or possibly stay was, this is perhaps the first season where the four finalists in the college football playoff, three of them have lost their head coach. So, uh, Nick Saban obviously retired, surprising everyone. Caleb Bohr left to take his place at Alabama, and Michigan has now uh, lost Jim Harbaugh to the NFL. Steve Sarkeesian uh, stands alone as the, uh, the, the sole head coach remaining from the Final Four of this year's national championship contenders. Um, we'll see again next season's a 12-team playoff, so many more opportunities for people to uh, – to join it, you know, another interesting point. This one, I don't know if this story is going to get missed only because it it was reported like maybe an hour before all of this information about Harbaugh formally joining the Chargers came out. But and I'm grabbing it. There it is. Um, Dennis Dodd actually published an article at CBS Sports that uh, Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan is now willing to grant immunity for NCAA violations to Jim Harbaugh. So let me give you the background on this. Harbaugh isn't an idiot. Like he was still negotiating with Michigan in case, you know, maybe the NFL stuff is to work out or maybe Michigan does something to, to make him want to stay. Um, and one of the negotiation points that had come up in the past week or so was that he wanted Michigan to grant him 
basically immunity from uh, from well they we want it to be the right to not be terminated if he was found liable for some of the NCAA violations. Not, I mean, you could be fired for other things, but not if the NCAA um, decided to, uh, uh, if the Wolver, if, um, yeah, if something came out of the two ongoing NCAA investigations. Again, those two investigations are the one that was from before the season involving improper uh, contact during the COVID-19 period. That problem, I mean, it's been jokingly said it's over a cheeseburger. Um, the part that brought, brought in uh, Jim Harbaugh, the part that led to the uh, the first three games, not uh, having him not coach those first three games, was that he had lied to investigators. At least that's the allegation. Um, and they're going to have those hearings, you know, in 2024 so this year so it was kind of a moot point at least in so far as the national championship year the second investigation is clearly the better known one over the entire connor stallions um scouting scheme sign stealing however you want to phrase it um which again how much impact it made i'm not sure it's certainly one of the more colorful stories we've ever had in college football in the middle of a season let alone involving a, a team that was you know, inevitably going to win the net. I mean, clearly now won the national championship, but was certainly heading in that direction. Um, but all of this said, Harbaugh had asked that if he was to be retained by Michigan, that they would have sort of a system in place where an internal panel at the University of Michigan would review whether or not to fire him if the school were punished by the NCAA. Also, I should mention the NCAA, and this is something that snuck into the rules. I mean, snuck in the rules is a bit of a, maybe a bit of an overstatement, but it wasn't really, not many people paid attention to it until it was basically January 1st of last year, January of 2023. And a new NCAA rule was, um, went into force that created strict liability, um, a strict liability clause for head coaches. Now, what does that mean? Um, so, uh, or at least, you know, uh, sort of vicarious liability. I have a legal background, so I'm trying not to phrase this wrong. But basically, now head coaches, you know, your staff could be, you know, 100 people at some of these FBS, you know, power programs, right? You know, how many people coach at Alabama? How many people coach at Ohio State? How many people coach at this? If any one of the staffers or coaches does a violation, the head coach can be nailed for the exact same thing. This made, um, this, this rule came from basketball, where, you know, a lot of the, uh, um, not so above board payments, the things you're not supposed to do. They were kind of handing it off. You know, the, the head coach of, of a college basketball program would say, I have no idea my assistant was doing that. So that's why this rule came up that the head coach is now also equally liable for things that happen to their staffers. Meanwhile, you jump to football, got a ton of staffers, and you can get br brought into something that's going to be awkward. Now, I realize the, the topic of Connor Stallings is super controversial, so maybe that's not the best one to uses an example of it, but there's going to be a situation where, gosh, some some staffer at some school is going to get the football team in trouble and the head coach is going to be like, I have no idea who this, I didn't know they even went here. Um, you know, you could see that. I don't know. That, that That's just me. Anyone who's worked in large organizations run into it. But all of that said, this story kind of is going to get mostly missed because hour an hour before the uh, the Chargers hired Jim Harbaugh, Michigan said they were willing to grant him his request for immunity for NCAA violations had he stayed with Michigan, but it ended up being a moot point. But hey, you know what? If you're Sharon Moore, it's good to know that that might be something they would be willing to negotiate for you. So again, if you'd like to join the conversation, if you have thoughts on uh, Jim Harbaugh is now leaving Michigan to join the Chargers, um, thoughts on where Michigan goes from here, thoughts on really any aspect of it, I welcome you to hit request. Would love to have you as part of this conversation. Um, this is just something we wanted to, to, to have a show, toss it up. Um, we usually do these Tuesday nights where we kind of have an open mic on college football talk with anyone who wants to to join here on a an X space or a Twitter space. I'm Bobby Kairi. Uh, this is RCFB Talk 178. Excuse me, I'm going to have a sip of water real quick. So yeah, we a little bit about, for example, some of the potential candidates if Sharon Moore somehow doesn't get elevated. The fact that Jesse Minter, the defensive coordinator, may be joining. Um, Jim Harbaugh is expected to be joining Jim Harbaugh at uh, 
with the the Chargers. And I'm going to now take a pause because it looks like, Kevin, you've come up here. I'd love to have you uh, on mute. Just let me know when you get a chance. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Hi. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, it's a bummer. Jim's leaving our program. You know what I mean? I, I really i am grateful for what he's the culture of this of Michigan's turned into in the last three years. Grateful for three back-to-back Big Tens. Um, Sharon Moore should be the head coach without question. Um, I'm hoping Harbaugh keeps some of the staff here. That's been a big part of that culture change, but I don't foresee that happening. Um, I, I, I'm disappointed that like this, this I, we both saw that news that came, came out late that Michigan was going to come back and say like, we are, we're willing to put this immunity clause in. I wish this would have been done in the beginning. Um, it felt like Harbaugh was going to leave no matter what happened in the season or whatever the contract was going to be thrown at him. But um, the recruiting, the recruiting uh, rankings for the next two years don't look particularly great. Um, so I hope, uh, so I hope that there is a plan in place for Sharon to set him up for success because he is an incredible coach and deserves the head coaching gig. I hope he, I hope he gets the the bandwidth to turn this program into whatever he believes should be it going forward. Yeah, absolutely, Kevin. I agree with you. I think no matter really that, that immunity clause, while it was nice to, to finally get it in, um, I'm on the the fence of thinking if it was too little, too if it was too late. I don't know if it's too little, but too late. I think Harbaugh was going to give it a serious listen, um, as you mentioned, because again, heading into the season, it seemed like I think the combination of he'd been there for nine years, he'd proven that he could beat Ohio State at least twice heading into the season. He proved he could get them into the playoff at least twice, and granted. You know, I don't know the critique of can you get into the national championship? I'm just kidding. The playoff is, is hard enough. I'm just going to say that. But uh, it seemed like he was ready to look and ready to listen, especially, again, flirting with the Raiders a couple of seasons earlier. Um, but and also the fact that this team was so uh, veteran, so many of these guys were going to be inevitably, you know, running out of eligibility, heading into the NFL. Um, so much talent. I mean, J.J. McCarthy as a quarterback is probably one of the better quarter. It's probably the best quarterback he's coached at uh, Michigan himself as a coach. Uh, and certainly, you know, despite the fact that they never seem to ever really use him to his full potential. Only reason I say that is because you'll see how the NFL draft rankings go and you'll see he's much higher than you kind of expect for how he was performing at Michigan. So, you know, there's probably some, the way they were using him and his willingness to kind of go on that level, you know, if you can go in the first round of the NFL draft or at least be one of those those early picks as a quarterback, I mean, go for it. No one's going to fault you for that. But it seemed like he knew, like, all right, if if I'm not going to get it done with this team, the way he was building the Michigan program up, it wasn't going to be, like, necessarily a reload situation for the immediate season afterwards. It's Although I do want to say, um, while you're losing guys like J.J. McCarthy, Blake Corum, that amazing running back, uh, Roman Wilson... Zach Zinter, whose season unfortunately ended a little early because of the the, the broken leg. Uh, Chris Jenkins, you know, Mike Sander still. Uh, you, you're also going to be retaining some guys. I mean, Donovan Edwards, who, although not looking at his best this season like he had the previous season, obviously had a return to form in that national championship game. I was in the press box for the national championship game this season, and that was just like, hello, Donovan Edwards. Where were you? <laughs> You know, that he that was uh that was a good moment for him. Um so he's coming back. Um Colston Loveland, their excellent tight end, you know, uh Mason Graham is apparently gonna be back as well. Incredible defensive lineman, uh Will Johnson, the incredible cornerback who had, along with Sanders, still one of the those interceptions in the second half of the national championship game. They're gonna have some people there, so they're gonna have some some stars. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how they build it up. Um, also, uh, with Harbaugh leaves, the 30-day window for all Michigan players opens up for an initial portal session, um, which, as we just watched, can be pretty dramatic if you're at Alabama. Um, uh, I don't know how Michigan will do. I, I have some thoughts that maybe they're they're going to keep because so many of the best, so many of the best guys are probably leaving to go to the NFL. I, I don't know how who's necessarily going to raid the pantry. Um, and then it'll be very interesting to see. When we get to the spring portal window, who they're going to look, whoever ends up as a head coach of Michigan, who they go for to kind of backfill, are they going to be willing to be a little aggressive with the transfer portal just to, to fill in some spots? I mean, I, we haven't even talked about what's going on at the rival school because goodness gracious, Ohio State, 
some people have said nothing will will galvanize a team more than their rival team having the level of success like Michigan just did because they they grabbed so many people out of that portal and so many other uh, you know I, I still can't believe Bill O'Brien's going to be their offensive coordinator. It could all flop. I mean, there's there's so many ways things you know, on paper you know the saying is um, their team is like the. Uh, when, back when, um, oh my gosh, Mac, yeah, Mac Brown was at Texas. They used to joke he was always the February national championship at Texas because he would always just pull in just incredible talent and people like, oh, watch the Longhorns are going to just plow through the season and it wouldn't quite work out. I don't know if that's if that's what's happening at Ohio State or if Ohio State's going to be successful, but certainly Michigan has galvanized them. Uh, and now uh, with Jim Harbaugh leaving and and his unique approach um to coaching clearly work but it is a unique approach it'll be interesting to see when the portal opens up this initial wave which will probably be some departures and then the uh the spring when you can make some replacements that'll be very interesting to see one interesting point to make um this is kind of late in the this you know the cycle and as there's much that's been said much that's been written about the broken college football schedule and I don't know how it's going to be fixed or if it can be fixed, but we're, we're stuck with it for now. Um, most teams have already gone through their portal season. Uh, and then, you know, obviously we had a, a whole spate of teams suddenly open up with Alabama, Washington, Arizona, excuse me, and even some of the smaller schools like San Jose State, Buffalo, and South Alabama suddenly open up. But a lot of teams are actually, their rosters are pretty full right now. Um, so making room for a potential grab from Michigan's also going to be a little bit more complicated. It can be done. Certainly can be done, but it'll be interesting to see who is willing, who wants to leave and, uh, and who can be poached and if they are going to be of any importance. And then what's come spring, what Michigan will do to, to make adjustments heading into next season. You know, Kevin, I saw you briefly unmuted and I apologize. Um, did you want to add some more to this? Yeah, just have one last thing. I think the night, like, and you touched on it, the, the next 30 days are going to be really telling on what culture has been established at Michigan going forward. Um, if you don't see really anyone move, despite it being late in the season, I think that tells you what the rest of the team believe, thinks about Sharon Moore. And I hope that's the case because, again, his record and what's happened since he's really taken over the tenure speaks for itself. But, uh, Football, college football more than ever is more fluid than I think it's been in my entire life. So my hope is that this continues and Sharon Moore gets the chance that he should, he should get. That'll, uh, that, that'll be it. Thanks. Thanks for joining us, Kevin. And again, if anyone wants to join the conversation, please feel free to hit request. It's always great to hear from, from your thoughts on uh, college football. Obviously, this is a show about Jim Harbaugh leaving Michigan to take over the job with the LA Chargers. Okay, remember this time, I'm, I keep wanting to say San Diego because I am old enough that that is still drilled into my head. Um, some of the remarkable things you hear from people who are uh, not as old as you and, and they say things like, oh, well, you know, you, you just, uh, I'm not going to get into it, but uh, I'm not going to get into another one of my rants about age. So again, um, just again to reiterate what's going on, Jim Harbaugh is going to be leaving for the Chargers. It's expected, or at least it's been reported, by some fairly reliable sources. Um, for example, John U. Bacon. Um, he is a uh, author and someone who has been close to Harbaugh at Michigan. He has gone so far as to report that it seems like defensive coordinator Jesse Minter, who is an, one of the key parts of the uh, the success that Michigan has been having. And Jay Harbaugh will likely join um, Jim in Los Angeles with the Chargers. Offensive coordinator Sharon, Mo uh, Sharon Moore, um, widely reported by several people to be the odds-on favorite, the lock to become the head coach. It's kind of hard to argue that. I mean, as this was a very unique season in so many ways for Michigan. Again, you have five different guys who were the head coach at one point or another due to all the games that uh, Jim Harbaugh had to miss um, for the various uh, off the field issues that were, were uh, striking the, uh, striking the team, but more managed to have four victory, four of those victories, including the wins against Penn state, Ohio state, and in the, uh, you know, Penn state and Ohio state, which were the, the two larger ones. Um, that's impressive. So uh, I think for those reasons and the fact that the players seem to respect him a lot, you know, one thing, and I do remember after that victory where, gosh, uh, 
you know, he was he was on the field. He was very effusive. He was thanking Jim Harbaugh, um, you know, with a bit of a tear of his eye. And some people were cr- critical of that. I, I just have to say, I don't think there's anything wrong with a guy like that showing emotion, especially with all the things that were going on in that program. The thing that really struck me about this Michigan program this season, given all that off season, off the field stuff, it is remarkable they stayed focused the way they did. That I, I don't, you know, you can think that you know, all that stuff that the Michigan's guilty or whatever. You you can think that I'm not saying that influences this statement, but the fact is they managed to stay focused during all of that is incredible. So many other teams. I mean, if you follow college football, we've all maybe not quite stories like this, but we've seen silly things happen off the field and the team just seems to lose focus and, you know, looking for reasons. Sometimes the writers say, Oh, it was what happened off the field. That's what caused it. Whether it's like, uh, I don't know, your uh, assistant coach has a, a girlfriend who is a, an adult dancer who has a monkey that bits, bites a child, you know, <laughs> we've seen it all in college football. Right. Um, but uh, sometimes you just, you see some of these stories and you wonder how they're going to influence the team and, and Harbaugh managed to keep them focused. It's going to be interesting to see as he heads back into the NFL. Um, he's obviously experienced in the NFL. I mean, for those of you, uh, some of you probably have met head coaches in your lives or, or even assistant coaches. Um, a lot of the, I, I know at least one current NFL head coach, not head coach, assistant coach. And that dude, his whole life surrounds football to the point where, like, whenever I run into him, he doesn't want to talk about football. Like, that's the last thing he wants to talk about. So you have to have a very special mindset to be able to make a living out of this. And and Jim Harbaugh certainly has that uh, that that special kind of uh, that uniqueness um, in his personality that will be very interesting. It worked for three or four years it's in San Francisco, we'll see how it works for the L.A. Chargers. You know, again, if you'd like to join the conversation, I'd like to encourage you to hit request in the Twitter app. I'll let you up. We'll hear your thoughts. Um, it's a nice, welcoming environment. We always try to make it like that here on our CFB Talk, um, usually on Tuesday nights about general college football topics, but we, we decided to launch this special one. I think a lot is going to be written about uh, Jim Harbaugh's tenure at Michigan, um, especially because you can really divide it into, you know, three sections or three acts if you're going with kind of like a, a story or a screenplay version of it. Because for those of us who are around, which I, I have to clarify, because it was nine years ago. I mean, nine years ago, that, that for some folks, that was that was before they were paying attention to college football. But when he arrived from, uh, I remember that the 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 plan to hire him, they. Those of you who remember how excited Michigan fans were, this possibility that, that Harbaugh, their their former player, that was going to return to be their head coach and replace Brady Hoke, who had a less than stellar tenure towards the end with his clapping and um, not using a headset and all of those things that made him quirky. So they decided to bring him back. There was all that hype. I mean, the hype machine was in absolute full effect. For Michigan in uh, 2015, as I mentioned, kind of at the beginning of this particular recording, um, the uh, Fox Sports went all in with their idea of the Harbaugh, like the Harbaugh bus. They had a bus they painted to look like it was it wore khakis. I mean, <laughs> I remember when that was the big thing. Everyone was always joking about Jim Harbaugh and his khakis, and they hired a bunch. The permit, a bunch of their interns were following the bus. And they said they were all dressed up like Jim Harbaugh. And they even called him the Har Bros. Like it was the hype was so almost obnoxious that I know a lot of schadenfreude occurred when Michigan's first game was a road loss to Utah, um, despite all the hype machine kind of behind it. And then that season did kind of come back together again. They, they were able to put together um, a reasonable initial year for him. They, they went to the Citrus Bowl and defeated Florida. On the way, they did lose to uh, Michigan State, um, and which had went on to lose in the semifinal game. And then and they lost to Ohio State, which initially was a, a problem for Harbaugh in his tenure at Michigan. Um, and then, you know, you get to that, that second part of his career there, the second act, if you want to say it. And that was the, 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 the stress that kind of came with, I, I just say the, the pressure on the job started to not necessarily affect him, but kind of affect the fans. They were starting to get a little impatient with how long is it going to take? You know, we, we spent all this money. They're paying him millions of dollars. Why hasn't Michigan been able to beat Ohio State? Why hasn't it been able to challenge at the level that they expected when they hired Jim Harbaugh? That, of course, had it reached its nadir, it cratered. In the 2020 COVID season, um, where obviously they went two and four, 
Um, and and this is again one of those moments that you know it's been mentioned before. Um, in frankly, every season since he was willing to take a pay cut, he was willing to have his eight million dollar salary slashed to four. Smartly designed with lots of incentives um, uh, to uh, to boost it back up if he started winning again, which he did. Some of that conversation was great. I mean, so many great Harbaugh quotes over the years, those strange things, you know. I still remember um, initially he was not in favor of eating chicken. Like he told, I believe, one of his recruits that chickens are nervous, bir- nervous birds, so you shouldn't eat them. Now he's actually a chicken advocate. I, I, during the pandemic, they started apparently raising chickens. So he's actually gone on the record of saying, like, now he's a, he's a chicken advocate. But um, another one of those great quotes was during this time, um, right after the 2020 season, um, not only he said you know, it wasn't a big deal that his pay was being slashed, but again, you know, he went back to his mantra that he's going to attack each day with enthusiasm, enthusiasm unknown to mankind as always. So uh, we're going we're gonna to lose that part, that kind of quirkiness. Um, but again, when we're talking about the overall tenure of Harbaugh at Michigan, that was sort of the end of, of the second act. And then the third act has been the last three years where Michigan broke through the first season uh, in part of the first of these final three years, 2021, beating Ohio State, getting to the playoff and getting sacked by a, a much stronger Georgia team um, that they did not appear ready for. Next season, again, we're able to, to beat Ohio State again. Uh, and then kind of fell apart against TCU. It wasn't a complete collapse, but again, that Horn Frog team did what it did up until that championship and, and seemed to just get lucky. Um, and then finally, this season, not only did they do the trifecta of beating Ohio State one last time, they made it to the playoff, beat the semifinal. And then frankly, at that point, um, I thought Jim Harbaugh can can sign it off, even win or lose the national championship game. He did exactly what you know almost everything he said he was going to do and then lo and behold they win the national championship game in fairly i mean i'm like a lot of folks who who were predicting the game um for various agencies i actually do reporting and i and i i am on a, a different podcast for advanced media group um a lot of us were predicting washington was going to potentially get ahead of michigan and just kind of get them into a race that they weren't ready to do Instead, Michigan did what Michigan does. They absolutely just sort of, it was a, I'm actually going to go back to one of my favorite quotes um, from a discussion on RCFB. One of the uh, the fans in the comment section put it great. It was years, about two years ago, a Rutgers fan basically said, you know, fighting, uh, taking on Jim Harbaugh as head coach of Michigan is like fighting a, uh, is like a ferret being strangled in a bathtub by a maniac. Um, and I'm going to get it, it. It works so many ways because he's like, at first, you think the ferret is going to uh, is start scratching and and drawing blood. And you think, hey, this ferret might make it out. But then the, the maniac's grip tightens and it holds it under the water. And eventually you just get a pathetic kind of gurgle as bubbles come up and you have a dead ferret. And that's what happened in the national championship game. <laughs> Washington, Michigan got their hands on them and just strangled them and then by that entire second half we were watching them slowly suffocate the the wolverines i'm not gonna say or probably the huskies we were a uh, sad moment but again that was that was michigan doing what michigan does um <laughs> again i am gonna go ahead and ask one more time if anyone would like to join the conversation would love to have you up here hit request on the twitter app always enjoy hearing your thoughts on what's going on in college football Again, Harbaugh is now officially seems to be going to the Chargers. It's all but signed at this point. Michigan is going to lose a coaching legend. Um, it's been interesting to see some of the reactions. Uh, you know, one of the posts on RCFB was, you know, Michigan fan asking, should the Wolverines go ahead and build Harbaugh a statue or rename a f- football facility or something? Um Certainly, unless something really wild comes out, I would almost like I almost want to caution, like give it a year or so, like just make sure there isn't something you just never knew about that comes out later. But I think, you know, he's certainly if they're going to do something like that, he's earned it. I mean, some some folks have said, uh, including a Michigan fan, suggested they replace the bow, uh, the bow statue with Jim. And I, I think there's a strong argument for why that might be a wise move. Um, another question was. Where does Michigan's hiring of Jim Harbaugh rank in the all-time coaching hires? That's an interesting one, too. Um, I think some of the folks have pointed out Urban at Florida, Kirby Smart, 
Pete Carroll, uh, <laughs> Nick Saban, maybe uh, those above it, but there's certainly some uh, good ones there. You know, I see Fred. I'm going to go ahead and let you up, Fred. I uh, would love to hear your thoughts. Fred, what's on your mind? So, Fred, when you get a chance, just hit unmute. Oh, there we go. Um, no worries. So I'm a longtime Michigan fan. been following them probably ever since days when, when Harbaugh was a quarterback for them and uh, survived through the, the Brady joke years and what we call Rimrod years. And um, so, yeah, I was one of those fans, like like you mentioned earlier, many that were so hyped and excited when we saw that Harbaugh was going to come on board. Um, having known about his uh, what he did at his previous positions, with especially with Stanford and the 49ers in the NFL, brought both of those teams from like the bottom of the basement and their perspective uh, divisions or conferences or whatever, and brought them up to a winning program, right? And of course, you know, um, and yeah, I guess at this point, like, I'm also a Raiders fan in the NFL, so this news was kind of disappointing to me f- for two reasons, obviously. Um, you know, there was some rumors that he was going to maybe be the next coach of the Raiders if they decided not to uh, give it to their interim coach again. And um, I think um, I'm I'm better okay with him leaving, knowing that if they do make the right decision and bring on more as the next head coach, He's already proven that he can handle the job. I mean, he handled their most difficult game all season, plus a couple other ones with, with you know, the same type of grit and, and toughness and, uh, you know, passion and emotion that Harbaugh has. So um, I'm more worried about him being the coach of the Chargers. And as a Raiders fan, Raiders now – you know, I and mean, it may not happen the first year, but I would I would guess at least maybe by the second year, um, he would possibly start showing, you know, his his coaching ability um, and giving the Raiders a much more tougher time to, to to beat them. I'm trying to stay positive that there'll still be wins against the Chargers, but it'll be a lot tougher now, right, with with him at the helm. So. Um, I mean, we've got the GM now, so, you know, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's a, I don't know if you can say that that, that's an even trade or whatever, but, uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of where I sat with it. I got home from work and then kind of started seeing the, the stuff, and, of course, I had to go and check, you know, sources until I saw it come from ESPN, and I'm like, okay, it's not just, like, somebody trying to, like, get likes on <laughs> yeah. Twitter or something like that, you know, saying, oh, breaking news, yeah, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> So yeah, I mean it's unfortunate, but I mean, like you said, he's he's accomplished what he set out to do. And yeah, those first couple of years were a little rough. And I was one of those ones was like, okay, come on, we, you know, we were hyped and we thought the first year was just going to be bang on and like they were just going to turn the program around right away, right? I think as fans we get yeah. we get a little overhyped and a little too um, assume too much, right? And there's you know there's a lot, especially in college football, like. And 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 pros too, but like there's a lot that comes into like taking over a team and and trying to improve. Like you know, you've got to get not only your own coaching staff in the right place, and uh, uh, you know, supporting your your mindset and your your thinking and and how you want to coach. But you've got to get the right players and the people on the field doing the job right. And um, you know, and it takes time to do that. So I mean, in the end of it all, like. Those first couple of years are what are, what they were, right? But without those, we Michigan definitely wouldn't be where they are at the end of the, you know this past season, right? So, so I mean, all all power to him. I mean, I say that respectfully, but I really don't want him to do well in San Diego. Or um, I say yeah, I almost did it too, in uh, in L. A. For, for the Chargers, <laughs> um, but. Um, I'm confident that Sean Moore will, will come in and, and take over the reins just fine. Thank you so much, Fred, for all of your thoughts on that. Yeah, and I just want to – you pointed out something that I think, again, for those who've, who were around watching Stanford when he took over, Stanford was at the absolute bottom when Jim Harbaugh was hired from San Diego. They had Walt Harris, who had um, who had left Pittsburgh before they would fire him. Basically, he had been um, – 
uh, Pittsburgh, uh, the the Panthers, not the uh, not, not not the the Steelers, but he was their head coach. Left um, kind of before they could fire him, and then Stanford hired him in two of the most disastrous years in any college football career. Like it, they lost to UC Davis, which I should put a star by it because UC Davis is now an FCS program. At the time, they were just trans transitioning up from Division Two. So they invited UC Davis and UC Davis beat Stanford and they had to write like a letter. Walt Harris wrote a letter to all of the uh, alumni apologizing for the, uh, the shame he had brought on the Stanford. So that was the state of Stanford when they hired Jim Harbaugh. And then he turned them around um, again with Toby Gerhardt, you know, uh, just an incredible run where a lot of people argue that, you know, that was the closest uh, Heisman vote. And some people think he maybe should have deserved it over Mark Ingram. And then, uh, yeah, again, so finishing with that that 12-1 and season before he was uh, hired by the 49ers and, and, again, turning the 49ers around. You know, as I've been talking, I just want to mention um, Michigan Athletic Director Ward Manuel has released a statement. Um, I want to thank Jim for everything he has done for a football program, which, again, yeah, no, it's 100% official. Athletic Department and University of Michigan over the past nine years. Every day he has worked extremely hard to elevate the stature of Michigan across the world with the goal of winning championships and developing young men on and off the field. Jim did exactly what he sought to do at Michigan, build our program to consistently win Big Ten championships and compete for national championships culminating with a record three straight outright conference titles and the national championship this year. He did the same off the field by graduating his players and providing life experiences through mentorships, internships, and team trips around the globe. That's actually a great point. I've totally forgot he was taking, they were going on those trips like Italy in places. Those were actually kind of fascinating. I, I love that only because you're in college, you're going to play sports. Yeah, that's great. Now, obviously, it's a bit more above board with the money you can take in. But for the majority of players, it's not like they're taking in insane amounts of money to, to play college football, even at the top P4 programs. I mean, you know, the top guys are, but not everyone is. Um, so the the fact that he was taking them on those international trips, I thought was neat, because I know that happens quite a bit at the D3 level and, um, oddly enough, non-scholarship FCS uh, the way NCAA rules work is um, it's easier if you don't have scholarships to take your team abroad. Um, but again, so uh, those trips I thought were neat. And it's interesting to see that mentioned in Ward Manuel's uh, statement uh, on all of this. Um, he notes again in the statement, we, Michigan, have just been discussing a new contract that would make Jim the highest paid coach in college football. In the end, he wanted to explore and ultimately decided to pursue a return to coaching in the NFL. We can't thank Jim enough for all that he has done for our student athletes, staff, and Michigan football. He will always be a huge part of our rich history and will be remembered as an all-time great Wolverine, both as a championship player and coach. Jim has always been extremely upfront with his communication regarding NFL opportunities and has been helpful with this transition in leadership. We had a great conversation tonight, and he informed me of his decision to return to the NFL and offered his assistance in helping to identify the needs of the program moving forward. We are working quickly to hire the next head coach for the program, and we'll do everything possible to keep this current staff and team together. We appreciate Jim's dedication and passion for Michigan, the university, and Ann Arbor, and I wish Jim and the entire Harbaugh family much success with the Los Angeles Chargers. So again, Ward Emanuel. Uh, Ward Manuel probably making his comment. So there you go. That is the official statement. Um, he is gone. Uh, and again, that's part of the reason we decided to have this emergency uh, Twitter space to hear from you and your thoughts on all of this. Again, it's going to be interesting to see. I, I did get again, going back to some of the stuff that uh, um, uh, Fred was just mentioning. It was interesting to think that he almost. He, at least he was in contention for that same uh, Raiders job just a couple of seasons ago. At least he was mentioned around it. And certainly this season as well, when that job came open, it was a question of whether he would be one of the potential candidates. Obviously, as you pointed out, it, it didn't end up that way. But um, uh, certainly uh, that, that's, that was an interesting point. And it is fun, I think, for some folks like Fred, some NFL fans who may be also uh, Michigan fans to now – Unless you're also a fan of the Chargers, suddenly he's now coaching against you, um, which will be interesting to see for some of those folks out there. Again, if you'd like to join the conversation, if you have thoughts on the uh, departure of Jim Harbaugh from Michigan to the San, <laughs> said it again, the LA Chargers, um, feel free to hit request. Would love to have you as part of this 
conversation. Um, so much that's been going on. Again, I'm just going to sort of reiterate some of the, the rumors that are popping up from more reliable sources, at least in terms of who's going with whom. Um, again, John U. Bacon, who has been close to the program, has written books about Harbaugh's tenure and is is fairly plugged in with the program, has been reporting that in uh, with Jim Harbaugh will probably go defensive coordinator Jesse Minter. Minter has been one of the key reasons for the success of the Wolverines this season. Um, he's also mentioned that Jay Harbaugh will also likely join his father in Los Angeles. Uh, Tron Moore will probably be the next head coach. That seems to be the assumption. It would be a surprise if he wasn't, um, although some names have been tossed around. In addition, it appears uh, Michigan will likely retain most of their other assistants in that circumstance, along with their strength and conditioning coach, Ben Herbert. Why is that person mentioned separately? Um, because strength and conditioning and development has been one of the foundations of what built this Michigan team into the team we saw this season, only because... What has been noted um, in various corners of the national media, particularly those who are more into the recruiting world, Michigan was not one of the, the top programs, generally like that top five or six or even four or five that recruits so well that they tend to be able to compete for national championships year in, year out. We're talking Alabama and that that may be coming to a close. We'll see now that Saban is out. Um, Georgia, Ohio State. Um, arguably Texas, Michigan wasn't really one of those, and neither was Washington for that matter. So that made this national championship all the more exceptional this past year. But the way, how did Michigan do it? Um, with with because with Washington, you can also point to some very very good transfers like Michael Penix Jr. Heading over to to Michigan, a lot of that was sort of growing their own talent, their inside talent. A lot of these guys were with the program. I know it was commented. Earlier, I know, I think it was Blake Corum saying, like, look at Mike Sandersill. He was three stars, and if you've seen the guy play as a DB, he's absolutely phenomenal. He had that that game-sealing interception with an 81-yard return um, against Washington in the second half of the championship game, among many other plays. So, I mean, they were doing a good job of not only identifying players, but developing them um, physically into their, their maximum ability. And that is something that uh, why they seem to emphasize a strength and conditioning coach is likely to be retained um, with the Michigan staff, uh, however it ends up uh, shaking out there. <clears throat> so um, let's see here. I think this is going to be, if anyone wants to join the conversation, hit request. Otherwise, I think I'm going to go ahead and slowly wrap this up. It's been going on for nearly an hour. And um, uh, it's always a good opportunity to talk to all of you and hear your thoughts. Again, we welcome them. Uh, I'd love to hear your voices here on RCFB Talk 178. Um, we were talking Harbaugh's departure to the L.A. Chargers. Um, we typically do these conversations on Tuesday nights at 10 p.m. on sort of a general college football topic. But when a special event comes up, like the more surprising Saban's decision to retire or Harbaugh's expected departure to the L.A. Chargers, we thought it'd be a good opportunity to fire one of these up and hear from you. So, on behalf of all of us here at RCFB, I'm Bob Akairi. It's always a pleasure talking to you. I'm going to hang up and listen.